May I now request the Attorney General of India, Mr. K.K. Venugopal, to address the congregation. Honorable Prime Minister Sri Narendra Modi, Honorable Chief Justice of India, Justice Sarat Bobde, Honorable Minister for Law and Justice, Sri Ravi Shankar Prasad, Justice Ramana, Justice Arun Mishra, Honorable Justice Nageshwar Rao, esteemed judges from India and abroad, my colleagues at the bar, ladies and gentlemen, I have selected this theme for a very short address, and that is taking poverty to the courts. Now the first question which would come to the minds of most people would be, what have courts to do with poverty? But what has to be remembered is that so far as India is concerned, when we gave ourselves a constitution, it was a welfare state, and it was a state which had to ensure that the noble promises made in the constitution would be kept. And a state would include not only the legislatures, parliament, the executive, but also the judiciary. And uh, it is here that the question of violation of human rights by erad not eradicating poverty would arise. It's now very well settled that so far as uh, poverty is concerned, if there is a failure on the part of the state, the state will be violating fundamental rights. Now the traditional uh, concept of human rights violation is torture, illegal incarceration, violation of freedom of speech, but there is another dimension if people are allowed to live in substandard human conditions. Substandard human conditions. Now, uh, the Scott Lakey, a famous writer, is this to say about poverty. He says, and this is an extract, quote, however, when people die of hunger or thirst, or when thousands of urban poor and rural developers are evicted from their homes, the world still tends to blame nameless economic or development forces or the simple inevitability of human deprivation before liability is placed on the doorstep of the state. Mary Robinson, the United Nations Commissioner on Human Rights, said, quote, extreme poverty is the greatest denial of the exercise of human rights. You don't vote. You don't participate in any political activity. Your views aren't listened to. You have no food. You have no shelter. Your children are dying of preventable diseases. You don't even have the right to clean water. It's a denial of dignity and the worth of each individual, which is what the Universal Declaration proclaims. Now, uh, the question is that one would expect that if there is this sort of poverty, and I will tell you that we have reduced poverty to a very, very low level today in India, you would ask as to how is it that if there is gross violation, there are no food rights, there is no civil disobedience, and so on. But so far as Indians are concerned, they are fatalists. And they have a phrase in one of the languages, Kannada, it is called Hane Baraha, what is written on your forehead. And what they believe is that destiny has condemned them to this state of a life of hunger and suffering. Now, uh, this being so, we find that there is a group of lawyers, social uh, uh, justice lawyers, who have come to the rescue of those suffering from deprivation. And they have approached and have been approached from the very beginning the Supreme Court of India 
in its original jurisdiction under Article 32 of the Constitution to prevent the horrendous suffering by a section of the people of the country. Now, uh, one should realize that India is a vast country and uh, when we got freedom and the Constitution was adopted in 1950, the census showed that 70% of the people were living below the poverty line. That is what was the state of the country after 200 years of British rule. Now, this has been reduced today to 21%, and that, I think, is through the effort of government. Now, the government has brought in a series of uh, reforms, social reforms, and uh, about 50 of them, and if we could mention a few of them, one is the Mahatma Gandhi National Rural Development Guarantee Act of 2005, providing for social security. The Prime Minister's Life Insurance Scheme for all the poor and deprived. The Prime Minister's People's Wealth Scheme, a financial inclusion scheme that aims to expand and make affordable ex access to financial services to all. The uh, Prime Minister's All India Mass Medicine Project to make quality medicines available at affordable prices to all, particularly the poor and the disadvantage. And these are only a few. There are very many. But to cap it all, we have a, an act recently passed known as the Food Security Act, where food grains are distributed at subsidized rates to about 70% of the people of this country. Now, uh, as I stated, the massive property, uh, poverty has been reduced and a tremendous dent has been made. But to wherever the state in the nature of the government has failed to produce results in some areas where there are gaps, then in such a case, the Supreme Court of India has stepped in. And there are a series of judgments, I think which will bring tears to the eyes of people. One is uh, the right to life guaranteed in any civilized society, according to the Supreme Court of India, carries with it the right to food, water, decent environment, education, medical care, and shelter. In the another judgment, they said, and uh, this is quoting from uh, Rabindranath Tagore, let the child of, 20th of 21st century find himself in that, quote, heaven of freedom, of which our poet laureate Rabindranath Tagore has spoken in Gitanjali, his poem. In another third judgment, the court has said if there is an obligation upon the state to secure to the citizens an adequate means of livelihood and the right to work, it would be sheer pedantry to exclude the right to livelihood from the content of the right to life. But to cap it all, the Supreme Court of India declared that the right of a child to free education up till the age of 14 is a fundamental right. Now, this is something which would not normally expect from a court, because for the court to elevate a right to a stage, to a level of a fundamental right, and uh, the government accepted this. They amended the constitution, and under Article 21A, they made this a fundamental right, the right to free education of children up to the age of uh, 14. Now, one would wonder, how is it that, so far as the Supreme Court of India is concerned, it is taking on its shoulders what one would at first, in first blush believe that uh, it is an executive power, it's a legislative power, and how does it uh, encroach upon these powers? But what one has to realize is that we are uh, having a welfare state, and we are a developing country, and the problems with the developing country face is different from that of a developed country. And therefore, one has to proceed on the basis that the lowest of the low is the one which has to first get priority so far as the Supreme Court is concerned. The Supreme Court went to the extent where we had an article in the Constitution which merely declared that no person shall be deprived of his right to life or liberty other than by a procedure established by law. The court asked itself 
what is his right to life? Does it mean a mere animal existence? Or does it mean that a person has to exist with a roof over one's head, with the tools of his trade, with a job, and with food in his stomach? And the court said that all these are essential, otherwise it will be a mere animal existence, and therefore every single individual in this country has a right to live as a full human being. Now, uh, with this interpretation, the apex court of the country did not hesitate in extending the full force of the law to the aid of the sections of the population living in some cases, perhaps in subhuman conditions. And uh, with the collaborative efforts of the government of India, which has been extending itself with, as I said, with at least about 50 uh, welfare projects, and with the uh, uh, collaborative effort of the Supreme Court of India, the area of reducing poverty of this section of the people, though which is very small today compared to what it was when we obtained uh, freedom, that uh, we could well hope that so far as poverty is concerned, it would be eradicated in the next few years from the face of India.